It's time once again for the weekly cover price top 10, the top 10 selling comic books and a TV show pushed a book to number one. Let's take a deep dive up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hello, panelologists. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. Before we get started, do all that great like, comment, subscribe stuff, share it, notification bell, whatever you need to do. Uh, really appreciate all those of you who come and spend time watching me talking about comic books. Also, follow me on other socials, Bronzeville underscore comics on Instagram. Same thing on whatnot. There is a description in the link to this video or there's a link in the description of this video uh, to get $10 off your first purchase with whatnot. If you have not yet signed up, it doesn't have to be a purchase with me. There is also a link to my eBay store as well as my email. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the cover price top 10. We're going to start with number 10 on the list, which is birds of prey issue number two. A Otto Schmidt 1 in 50 variant, a near mint, selling for $148. Um, wow, this book is selling for $100, $200. This is going crazy. Part of the reason. Now, when you think about variants, this has, I guess, two things going for it. It's got a sexy girl. And there are folks who collect bubblegum covers. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I'm always interested. Birds of Prey, number two. Has this book even come out yet? October 4th. I guess it just came out. Um, did I get it? I think I probably got the cover A, but not. The, I definitely did not get the one in 50. Um, I always like to check to see if it is. There we go. Let's, let's start this all over again. Let's look on eBay. Birds of Prey to Otto Schmidt. S-C-H... MIDT. What can we get it for? $160, $170, $160, $113 uh, with two days left. This book has been going absolutely bananas. So, um, yeah, there is a, a, a one in 25 for issue number three. Um, I think, though, I, I wouldn't compare these two, even though this. Um, I don't know enough about this, but I, I'm going to guess, and let me know in the comments if you agree with me, that the bubblegum has something to do with it. Let's look at number nine. Number nine, Wolverine number 36. The first appearance of Helverine continues to sell strong. We do have some 9.8s to talk about. And here's one of the things. This is a, a regular cover. So we have some 9.8 sale in the 93 to $170 range. Let's see what we can find on eBay. Wolverine 36 CGC 9.8. Again, more. There are going to be plenty of these coming available. Um, 100, 96, 90. I, I would not jump on these because there are going to be plenty of 9.8s coming to market on this. Uh, this is the first few. Those who submitted it quickest, get it back first, throw it on the market, and probably end up getting the best returns. Um, so I would be really wary of this. Maybe find, for cover price if you can, or close to it at least, a, uh, a copy if that's a book that you want. Uh, I would be a little bit wary about the long-term value of this book. Number eight on our list is Batman 609, a 20-year-old book. I mean, this book is 21 years old at this point. Thomas Elliot becomes Hush. The start of that storyline or um, the first appearance of... Uh, it's a classic 2000 storyline. There is a newsstand copy of it available. Uh, so this is, you know, a book that does have uh, some value to it. Um, it's selling at about what forty dollars and nine point eight are just north of one fifty. So um, again, a book you can find 
they're they they are out there. Let's take a look at the. I want to see what key, if Key Collector has any news about this. Okay, we'll go to Batman, and there are plenty of books on under Batman. Six oh nine. Nope, no, no real news there. Um, I am not completely sure why this has jumped in value. But let's um, take a look at uh, Batman 609. Let's take a look at, because this is a book that's that's out there, right? It's 20 years old. It's not, uh, it's a modern book. It's a newer book. There is a newsstand that's going to draw a premium. Um, there are 1,500 copies on the census about 60% of them in a 9.8. So 9.8 in the 150-ish range. And it did kind of jump up to what the highest was, what, 240 in 2021. It came back down. But it's been fairly consistent. It's had some ups and downs and a little bit of an uptick here. Um, it's a solid key. You know, I think where where's its low point is like at 115, 120. Yeah, I don't. It's I don't think it's going to go below 100. Um, and there is a possibility if we do see an adaptation of this storyline in um, the Robert Pattinson universe in the DCU, um, that we could see a spike in this book. I think it's a good solid key. And if we wanted to look for nine points, point eights. As I said, the fair market value is about 140 and change. Um, yeah. You know, people are, are expecting, <laughs> are expecting, I don't know. Some people, uh, is that a new, I'm not sure if that's a new stand or not. Um, some people are expecting 2021 prices and some people are expecting 2041 prices, I guess. Um, so, yeah. 9.8. It's five hundred dollars. You can get it for five hundred, which is crazy. Uh, we we see what the fair market value is. Uh, so there are plenty of options out there. You just have to get the one that for the price that you want. It is a key. It's going to remain a key. Uh, this the supply of nine point eights is not going to increase as dramatically because the book has been submitted. Transformers number one, the Ian Bertram one in one hundred foil, another brand new book. Uh, near mint copy selling for 137, 9.8 for $317 up to 350. It is a one in a hundred. Um, so it is going to have a ratio price to it. Uh, these with Robert Kirkman's void rivals, transformers has been going bananas. Uh, all of those properties, people jumping in on. I'm not an eighties kid. I'm a seventies kid. So, Transformers is a little bit lost on me. Um, so let's take a look of, on eBay. Transformers. Whoops. One, one, colon, 100. I mean, there are people bidding on it. It's already 152. This one, 175. You can get it for now. Another bid. And these are raws. Um, a pre sale 9.8 at 380. The big boys, big comic shops are going to have enough of these to throw into a 9.8 pre-screen or just throw them in their foils, tend to hold up pretty well in terms of not incurring damage. Um, and so, you know, you're going to see a 9.9 of this, I would imagine. Um, let's take a look. I want to take a look on Transformers 1. Uh, I, I wonder... If go collect, so we're talking about 2023, and let's see, yeah, the, the it's listed as a spoiler. I guess it wasn't um, previewed. Yeah, there's nothing on the census yet, so there have been. I guess there have been pre-sales, and that's why we're, we're seeing it on cover price. Um, here's an interesting one. Department of Truth, number one, cover A. Um, this had been a book that was hot during the comic boom. We can see that near mint copies are selling that for about 50 bucks, 9.8 for, you know, uh, well under 100. Uh, there is news with this, right? Isn't there? Oh, um, James Tinian 
has announced that the writer strike is done. He's back to working on the script for the show. Still not a com confirmation that we will see the show. Um, but let's take a uh, and of uh, Drew. This is a book I actually want to read uh, because it does sound like an intriguing thing. There's nothing new on Key Collector, but um, yeah, trending twenty due to an update from Tinian that production has resumed on the live action project. Production has not resumed. His writing has resumed, um, and still there's a there's a gulf between writing the screenplay and actually having the project produced and released. But let's take a look long term at where this book has been. They spelled department right. Department of Truth One. And we'll just stick with the cover A. That's the one that made the hot list. Um, there are 3,300 copies on the census. There's 199. Almost 90% of them are 9.8s. So obviously we're going to look at that. Go Collect has a fair market value of 65. It's bumped up a little bit. But look, it did hit. And this is a book that came out in September of 2020. So it had that combination. Pandemic, books were just starting to, to get released. Comic shops were opening to some extent. People were able to get comics in late 2020. Um, this was one of those books that a lot of people jumped on because of Tinian, because it, the story was intriguing, and it jumped up to close to $200 in a 9.8. And then you can see it's kind of trended down ever since. Uh, I think there's an issue. The supply is healthy. The demand is uh, is not there because a lot of people already have the book. I mean, how many sales are there of this in a 9.8? 802 sales. That's a lot of sales for a book that came out uh, three years ago. Let's take a look on eBay for what we can get. I mean, the, the movie, the, the show, I think at this point would have to be a huge hit uh, in order to, I don't look at cover A. Yeah, you can buy one for 50 bucks. Uh, I'm looking just for cover A, 89. Is that 50 bucks with $17 shipping? So $67. Uh, there are a ton of variants there, store exclusives. There's a bunch of these out there. So you could, I think, you know, getting a book for under $70, uh, this is the second print. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's probably not the best, worst pickup in the world, but I think in addition to seeing the show because of the supply, I think there'd have to be. Um, a great deal of success for the show in order for folks that aren't already familiar with the title that aren't in the comic book space, a lot of folks to really want it. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I can see people buying it. I think the, the price is good. I don't think it's going any lower. Uh, so that might not be a bad pickup. Let's move to, let's go to number five on the list. Number five on the list is this again, Wolverine 37, the Greg Capullo one per store virgin exclusive. No 9.8 sales yet. It is hovering around $60, which seems to be a bit of a drop. Um, I guess it's held pretty consistently in the $50 to $60 range. We will see. Um, I guess there's no... I'm, I'm, it's going to be about another week or two, probably before we see some come to market. I would imagine that if... Um, They don't even list it as the because the Capullo variant, the one per store. There are no there are no sales yet. There will be. Um, let's see if anybody has pre sales on. You can see you, uh, then you buy it now. It's forty five dollars. Actually, that's not damaged. Um, near mint sealed seventy bucks. That's what you're going to have to pay for it. We're not seeing any nine point eights yet. Let's move to number four on the list. And number four on the list, X-Men 130, first appearance of Dazzler, right? High-grade Raws are going to get you, you know, probably around $200. 
this book is still trucking. Um, it's still maintaining its value. I'm dazzled. X-Men 130. This is the first appearance of Dazzler, of course. Um, the uh, speculation that Taylor Swift will be playing Dazzler potentially in Deadpool 3. The most common sale is a 9.6. Uh, and we can see that, ooh, a little uptick there. Look at this. We Wow. Where where were these sales? Yeah, we, we were seeing this. This was selling in June for about $230 in a 9.6. And now we're up to four, five, six hundred dollars $600 in the last month. That has really jumped up. This one, the most recent, an eBay auction for $438. Uh, you can get something good out there. I want to check out the 8.5 because I sold an 8.5. Was it an 8.5? I think it was an 8.5 I had. That's gone up a little bit too. So that's, all of these are, are look trending up pretty sharply, um, which probably means not the time to buy. You know, it is, high grade is tough to get. It is a book that is uh, 43 years old. So uh, we'll see, but there is, Kind of a bubble to that speculation. The bubble can continue to expand if Taylor Swift doesn't indeed play the character. But if it's a one-off, what's the book going to be worth in five years? Uh, this, I mean, maybe for a quick flip, but it's it's going to remain a key. But I think that there is going to be a fall off in its value. Let's move to number four on the list and go a little more recent. Uh, Cyberpunk. Number Cyberpunk 2077 Trauma Team number one. Let's get the news on that. Hmm. Why is that? Cyberpunk 2070. Oops. 2077. Is that that's a game book, I guess? Let's look at news. Yeah, I, I'm not enough. I'm not familiar enough with this book to really talk about it. Uh, 9.8s right around just south of a hundred dollars. Raw is in the twenty dollar range. Uh, let's check. Go collect. Cyberpunk. Again, this is a book recent enough that didn't. That doesn't doesn't have a history of key significance. There are only two hundred on the um, census. Two hundred thirty-four, eighty-nine percent of them are nine point eights. Let's take a look at the sales trends in the nine point eight. It's you know been close to case cost or under case cost at sometimes. Now it's hovering right around a hundred dollars in the last week. I mean, we go back to, uh, you know, $44 auction in August, $70 fixed price. Uh, I think what's interesting to look at, if you're interested in this book, is week to week, look at the, the CGC census count. I imagine some folks will be sending this in. You know, you can keep an eye out for this uh, in the back issue bins. Let's go to number two on the list. A perennial key, Spawn number one. First appearance, full, full appearance of Spawn. Um, Todd McFarlane starting that project over an image high grade raws, you know, close to a hundred, a little short of that 20. You could probably get a potential candidate for that. This book has come down a little bit. It's, uh, it was over 200 early in the year, still waiting for some news for a potential movie, but that as you know, spawn fans know has been really slow going uh, in, in developing that. Um, McFarland is taking his time uh, on that, and he does want a lot of involvement. You can see the prices have been fairly steady, but you can see over since in the last two and a half years, I mean, this book jumped up, right? It was in the, what, what were we talking about, 140 range, right, in late 2020, and then the comic, boom, starts, and we're up to $260, and ever since then, 
it has been trending to try to get back to the trending down, try to get back to the trend line where it was previously. I'm trying to get sold prices. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so now we're talking about $150, $160, which is kind of a natural progression from where it was. I think that's a good solid price for this book. Again, there's no shortage of them. There are 23,000 on the census, almost half of them 9.8s, 69 9.9s, and 610s. So uh, it is a book that you can get that's perfect, per perfect. So we, we'll see what that uh, entails. Now, let's go to number one on the list. And I did say a TV show. Was it the first episode of Loki? No. What is it, the finale of Ahsoka Tano? No. It was the number one show in America, Sunday Night Football, that drove Dazzler number one to the top spot. Right, Taylor Swift appearing at the Chiefs Jets game in a box with Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman just had the comic book community going insane uh, and you know pushing more and more sales of Dazzler number one. You see, nine point eight is in about the two hundred fifty dollar range right now. High grade books about twenty five bucks. Remember, this was a direct only. There is no newsstand on this. There is an error. Uh, the error, I don't think, is significantly more expensive. Um, it's Yeah, it's about the same price. There's uh, not a huge difference in value. Let's take a look at the trend on this. We've seen this book a few times. Uh, on this list, It's it's kind of been a, a perennial book on the list. Um, we're going to look at the 9.8s because, I mean, there are more sales than a 9.6, but let's look at the 9.8s. You can get 9.8s from this book. $250 book and a 9.8. And you can see, you know, it's uh, it was hovering around $100. I mean, Dazzler's not the, the most popular character. When we get to pre-pandemic, it was flirting a little north of 100. She did have an appearance in um, that final Fox X-Men film. And then, it, I mean, look, a sold price of $62 in November 2020, then up to 112 And then it spikes up to 239 and it has maintained that value a little bit of ups and downs but it's maintained its comic boom value which may be a little bit scary there are 1400 universal copies about a quarter of them are 9.8s uh so you know again a book that is 42 years old there are plenty of them out there trying look at the dark cover i mean that dark cover a great John Romita Jr. cover. It was, it's a painted cover. It was originally supposed to be a graphic novel, but uh, they decided to publish an ongoing series for reasons I can't quite remember. What I do remember is I remember when this book came out, and uh, I didn't... The, the, the folks who became the owners of my LCS short after that, they didn't have a brick and mortar. Uh, they were set up at a flea market. And um, my cousin had gone there like a week previous. And we got together and he was like, you got to pre-order Dazzler number one. I'm like who, <laughs> what, what book am I ordering? And um, he says, yeah, you got to pre-order Dazzler number one. That's the only way you can get it. So I guess they didn't yet have a brick and mortar, but they might've been the process of doing that. And they were getting new books uh, somehow. It was, it was fairly shortly thereafter, probably during 1981, I, I think that they opened the brick and mortar. And that's the store I went to for probably about five or six years. Um, and they, um, the, it was Eminem comics in Nyack, New York. If uh, anybody remembers that who's from the area uh, and I pre-ordered Dazzler. So somewhere in my PC, I have a copy of issue number one. Uh, I probably read it once and put it away. I don't know what kind of condition it's in probably in pretty decent shape. Um, because I was how old when this came out, uh, 14. So I was kind of taking care of my books. You know, I don't think I had bags and boards back then, but, uh, that would be about another five years. So, um, but I do remember when it came out that you had to pre-order it. There's no newsstand. That's my Dazzler number one story. And that is the top 10 cover price list. So let me know what you think about the list. Again, Dazzler is like the hottest property, the hottest character in uh, the comic book space. Some new books, again, be careful. Uh, these, these new variants, 
more often than not, they don't hold their value. But it, don't take financial advice from me. Do your own research. Uh, some of these books I'm not completely familiar with. If it's an older silver bronze book, even a you know copper or foil era book, I'm pretty familiar with it, especially if it's Marvel DC. Um, but do do your own research, and if you want it, collect it. But you know, make sure you're you're spending your money wisely. Uh, that's that's what I have to say. Let me know how you're uh, enjoying the series. It does have as many views as some of my other series. Um, but I think it's, I, I try to do a little bit different take on the hot 10. It's not like, oh, this is the greatest book in the world, but like, where is it? Especially when we're talking about books that have a history, we can see from that dazzler. Number one, it has a history. It went up during the boom and it hasn't really come down. Um, again, do your own research, but to me, that's a little bit of a red flag in terms of what the book could be doing in the future. So, uh, that's it for this week. Hopefully you enjoy the uh, video. Thanks for stopping by. You can take a look at a couple of my other videos here and here. And this is Jim saying until next time, enjoy your comics.